Hey everybody, welcome to video number one from Organic Chemistry. This should be interesting because I don't have a hard copy of the worksheet. I'm teaching from one computer with the worksheet, talking to the other one for my video. This was my new idea for this year, rather than telling you guys, hey, guess what, learn organic on your own. I have the worksheet ready, and I figured you guys can always watch these lectures and go back to them. I don't expect you to know every, every, everything about organic chemistry, especially if you've not taken it. But the way your book works and the way AP is set up, they want you to know the basics. So I'm hoping you can get the basics from this. And yeah, we're going to go over all the answers and all the notes. You're going to have to listen because I'm not writing every note. But they're all going to be in here somewhere. Organic chemistry is the study of compounds containing carbon. Right off the bat, you'll notice everything has carbon. Other elements that often hang out with it, you learned them in bio. Hydrogen and oxygen are the big ones. But you can also do chinops, C. H hydrogen and nitrogen, O oxygen, and sometimes phosphorus and sulfur. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are huge. Add in a little bit of nitrogen. Kind of bonds covalent. C O V A L E N T, meaning they share, sharing electrons. Nonmetals do this, and when we're looking at organic compounds, we are looking at nonmetals. Electrons carbon has to contribute, it's in group 14, four valence electrons. Carbon only really makes three major shapes of molecules. We were seeing some crazy ones in Gen Chem, octahedral and two different kinds of bent. And in this class, we're going to see like square, planar, and some other stuff. Carbon does three basic things. CH4, if I counted my electrons, I've got eight electrons. Carbon always goes in the middle. Carbon is the diva. Carbon gets what it wants. Carbon wants in the middle. Carbon wants four bonds. Since hydrogen doesn't get any dots, quick review of Lewis structures, you've got a carbon with four bonds to hydrogen, and this little guy is tetrahedral. That's carbon's favorite geometry. Carbon loves tetrahedral molecules. It'll make long chains with each carbon tetrahedral, four single bonds, um, including bond angles. Mm, 1095, almost the X, not quite 1059, 1095. CH2O. Formaldehyde, ooh, put the dead stuff in it. Four, five, six, twelve electrons. If you're going like, what is she doing? Valence electrons, four from carbon, two from hydrogen, made six. Two more from oxygen. Don't have to do this yet. We will review this, but that's what I'm doing. All right, so carbon in the middle. Always carbon in the middle. Put everything else around it. Except that's a sad carbon with only one bond. I'm, I'm going to run out of electrons. If I try to give everything dots now, nice thing about carbon and oxygen is they're able to double bond. There's the use of my 12 electrons, 120 degree bond angle, and trigonal planar, flat triangle, trigonal planar. Hopefully the light's going on here like I kind of remember this. C2H2, eight electrons total from two carbons, and... Two more from some hydrogens gives me 10 electrons. Chain of carbons. Organic molecules love chains of carbons. I only have two hydrogens, so let's give them each a hydrogen. There's some sad carbons. There's not four bonds there yet. Easiest way, hydrogen can't multiple bond. Hydrogen doesn't do anything. It makes one bond. Triple bond those for a 180 degree bond angle in a linear molecule. Tetrahedral, trigonal planar, linear. Just count how many things are bonded. Which of these isn't truly a hydrocarbon? That would be CH2O. Hydrocarbons are defined as compounds that only have hydrogen and carbon. The stray oxygen in formaldehyde makes it not truly a hydrocarbon. It's actually called an aldehyde. That's the type of compound. If you take organic, you may look at those. And we'll look a little in the functional groups at the end. Hydrocarbons aren't soluble in water. That's why you get the pretty Walmart rainbow when the oil flows along with the rain down the parking lot. Hydrocarbons are soluble in other hydrocarbons. That's how that works. Like dissolves like. We'll look at polar versus nonpolar molecules and why that works throughout this year. Adding a hydroxyl group, the OH, like in rubbing alcohol, there's an OH, ethyl alcohol, OH, does make these compounds soluble in water. Because if you look at OH and H2O's Lewis structure, it's almost like the water mistakes that compound for a water. 
because it has OH. That's your commonality, the OH. Because if I did Lewis structure of water, look, OH. Alkanes are our favorite class of hydrocarbons because they're the most common. They contain only single bonds. And we say they're saturated because they're full. All possible bond spaces have hydrogen. If you had a double bond, you would have an unsaturated compound because not all spaces are full of hydrogen. General formula for an alkane. Of course, I don't have an eraser. Um, it's going to be C sub N. Like if N is 2, C2, H, 2N plus 2. Always works for an alkane. Two thumbs up. That's great. Now, the way we name alkanes is based on their longest carbon chain. And that's the chart I have up there, and you have it too. We're going to look at this, and then intro naming, intro some drawing coming right up. This is probably going to be more than one video. I'm not exactly sure yet, but we'll know soon. So when I look at these, if I had a single carbon, the little guy I just erased there, we would use the prefix meth, as in methane. You might have heard methane. If you had me for chem, you heard methane. Methane comes from swamps. Methane comes from large animals. Methane is gas. You get what I'm saying? So a single carbon is methane. If I have two carbons side by side, I would call them ethane. Those are my prefixes. The first four don't make a lot of sense. They don't mean anything number-wise. After that, it starts looking like geometry, like anything you were doing sides on polygons. Methane, ethane, prop, propane, as in gas grill, and butane, as in zippo lighter, are your next two. Somebody said for these th four, I can't remember those, and somebody said Molly eats peanut butter. Molly eats peanut butter. Okay, sure. After that, it turns into math class. Five is pent. Six is hex. But problems with seven. Everybody wants sept, like September. Septane. Septane is fake. Septane is lies. This is hept. Tane. Hept. Hept for seven. We do oct for eight. And non for nine. Nonanes aren't very common. And then dec for ten. And if you didn't catch that, hit pause. Write them down. So you can write and draw these a bunch of different ways. You can do them as condensed formulas, structural formulas, molecular formulas, empirical formulas. There is so much to do. And I'm going to, again, show off my eraserlessness and clean up this talk. We did pentane as an example. So if I told you pentane, based on what we did, C5 would be pent, 2N plus 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. There is my molecular formula, my actual formula for pentane. 12 hydrogens, 5 carbons, good to go. If I wanted to draw a structural formula, it's the first thing in your packet. Five carbons written out and showing the hydrogens around them. What's really cool is if you do this calculation ahead of time, and then you draw your molecule showing each carbon with four bonds, connecting to the carbons next to it, and surrounded by hydrogens, that's how many you'll need to make a saturated hydrocarbon. It always works out if you've got all single bonds. So if I did this for like C3, it'd still work. If I did it for C10, if I did it for like C112, it would still work for me to draw out. Structural formulas are a pain in the butt. They're long. We don't often do these. If you check out the picture below, it shows you a condensed formula of the same structural formula. All you do is take each carbon and you write it with the number of hydrogens that are on it. My leftmost carbon has three hydrogens, so I write CH3. My next carbon has two hydrogens, I write CH2. That's a condensed formula, and I can do a very condensed formula also where I just take out the lines. I kind of like them with the lines, especially when I'm teaching you guys, because I can see where every carbon is. Below that is like a take it or leave it one. AP Chemistry does not normally use that line formula except for rings, and that's okay. But what you'll see with my zigzag at the bottom is every end is a carbon, every bend is a carbon, and we don't bother with the hydrogens. Very rarely do I use those. If you take an organic chemistry course, you very well might have someone who does, though. I'm not a fan. 
So let's do the your turn and then we'll go to the next video for side chains to make sure I'm not cutting out in the middle of the video. So your turn, draw the structural formula, at least one of the condensed formulas and the skeletal formula for both ethane and nonane. Nonane is going to be long. So ethane would be C2, F is 2, 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 more is 6. Two carbons go together and I'm going to surround them by my bonds and put my six hydrogens around it. So if I were then writing the condensed formula, this carbon has three hydrogens and this carbon has three hydrogens. That was easy. Skeletal formula with each end being a carbon looks like a line. Ew. Nonane might be worse because it's going to be this giant molecule. Like I said, this is the last thing in this video. So C9, 2 times 9 is 18, plus 2 is 20. I'm taking a guess. We're going to need 20 hydrogens. And I'm taking a guess. I'm going to just sort of do that and sneak them on the end of the FA. So there's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you see why really we're not going to draw too many structural formulas for hydrocarbons in this class. I remember doing that in high school. I remember drawing those out in my notebook and being like, eh, no more. So let's change this into my condensed formula here. I'm keeping the dashes between. CH3, CH2. CH2. I bet I need seven CH2s in the middle. And I'll show you a little trick when I'm done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, CH2. And one more CH3 for nine. When you get to a condensed formula for such a large alkane, you can always do this, CH3. How many CH2s do I have? I have seven. Aha. Condensing the condensed. Very nice. Now for my line formula, if I choose to use the skeletal formula, pick a spot, and that's your first carbon. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Odd numbered hydrocarbons. With an odd number of carbons start and end the same direction. If I had had an even numbered hydrocarbon like octane with 8, I would start down and up. Does it matter which way the wiggles point? No. As long as I have two ends and seven crinkles, it adds up to nine. So there is how we're drawing our basic alkanes. The next lecture is going to start off with adding things to them and assigning names.